We are recording. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. This is the uh, initial meeting of the Finance Committee after reappointments have just been done. It is January 23rd, 2024. Open meeting law allows us to continue holding meetings remotely without a quorum of the committee physically present. Uh, and meantime, however, the Finance Committee meetings continue to make uh, be accessible through um, Amherst Media, by Zoom, by phone, and um, they are regularly broadcast. Um, we now have a quorum of the count of the Finance Committee present, and so I'm calling the meeting to order at, hold on one second, please. Uh, I'm calling the meeting to order at 201. Um, I'm going to ask each of you to confirm that you can hear us and we can hear you. When I call your name, please say it present, and uh, then we'll go on to the next person. Councillor Haneke. Present. Bob Hegner. Present. Kathy Shane. I'm here. Andy Steinberg. Present. Councillor Walker is still not here. Um, Bernie Kubiak. Present. Matt Holloway. Present. Great. And I'd like to welcome our town manager, Paul Bachman, Jennifer LaFontaine, and Sandy Pooler, who is joining us today for the first time, uh, although he's a familiar figure for Amherst. Um, the first item on our agenda today is the election of a chair. And once we elect the chair, I'll turn the meeting over to that person and they will follow the rest of the agenda, which includes electing a vice chair. So the floor is open for nominations, either self-nomination and or a nomination by another person for the position of chair of the finance committee. If I may, uh, I would like to uh, nominate Andy Steinberg. Uh, I can't think of a better person who's run this committee or could continue to run this committee. And if he's willing, uh, we're all better off for it. Okay. Andy, do you accept the nomination? Uh, yes. Okay. Are there any other nominations at this time? Okay. Uh, Andy, is there anything um, you particularly- Kathy has her hand up. Kathy, would you like, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'd like to nominate Bob Hegner. Okay. Um, Bob, do you accept the nomination? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations? Then I am going to ask both Andy and Bob Hegner in that order if they have anything they would like to say to the committee uh, on, in about a two-minute period. Andy? Well, thank you, um, and thank you, Bernie, for the uh, nominating me in the confidence. And I have thought about this question, and when I said yes, it was because I decided that um, it is a goal. We're in a very difficult period with the Finance Committee, but not because of the committee itself, but because of the financial challenges that are underway. And uh, I uh, would like to uh, make sure that we address those challenges in a collaborative and open fashion that involves input from all members of the committee and involves the entire community. Uh, I also uh, want to contribute my uh, years of expertise and uh, the work that I'm doing with the MMA and try and coordinate the work that I'm doing with the MMA as I have in the past with what our goals are as a committee and as a council. Um, the last thing that I want to say to finish up is that um, I do think that it is getting to a point where I need to start working with somebody uh, cl very closely as vice chair um, with the hope that 
a year from now we can begin we can do a segue and uh get somebody new involved in the chair role while uh, there's a, a second year of my current term so um those are the reasons that I accepted, and I thank Bernie for the nomination. Alicia, uh, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you, Lynn. Okay. Alicia informed me earlier that she has laryngitis, and so we can't expect that she's going to talk much, but uh, she is here. Um, and Alicia, we've gone through the nomination process for the position of president. Two people have been nominated, mm -hmm. Andy Steinberg. I mean, I'm sorry, the position of chair. Two people have been nominated, Andy Steinberg and Bob Hegner. Both have accepted the nomination, and we are in the process of uh, providing uh, information. Each candidate is uh, allowed to speak. Is there anything you wanted to add before we move on since we did move from nominations? But we'll vote after we get done with the speeches. No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Bob Hegner. Well, I don't have much to say. Um, I, I respect Andy a lot and I don't want Andy, I don't want you to feel that this is something where um, I'm running against you in that sense. Um, I accepted the nomination because I have been on the finance committee for this is my fifth year. And I think I have a, an understanding of how it works. And I think I have an understanding of the town's finances. Um, and I would like to help steward the town through this difficult uh, financial uh, period that Andy uh, mentioned. Um, I can't, um, anyway, I, 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 I will be willing to work hard and I'd be willing to uh, be open to suggestions as to how we can um, make things more, um, uh, we can make the finance committee more effective as we go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so in the voting, it's actually in this case, only the five counselors who actually votes count. However, I will be calling on the other two to uh, determine their concurrence one way or another. So I'm going to begin and go alphabetically. Councilor Haneke. I vote. <clears throat> I vote for Bob Hegner. Bob Hegner. I vote for Bob. Kathy Shane. I vote for Bob Hegner. Andy Steinberg. I vote for Andy Steinberg. Alicia Walker. Um, I'm going to abstain. I think this is a really hard decision. Thank you. Okay. Bernie Kubiak. I nominated Andy. I have no uh, qualms with, with Bob or his, uh, his abilities, but I think, um, you know, I go back a ways with Andy and I, I know his, uh, his ability and I, uh, would urge folks to uh, reverse their votes. Matt Holloway. I support Andy. Okay. Uh, at this point of the voting members, we have three for Bob Hegner, one for Steinberg, one Ooh. abstain, and two uh, counts, two non-voting residents who have supported Andy Steinberg. So it's Bob Hegner is chair, and I'm turning the meeting over to you, Bob, for the position of vice chair. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, I appreciate uh, the support. And Andy, I really hope we can work closely together over the next few weeks and few months to really uh, make a transition. Um, and I'm going to lean a lot on your knowledge um, and experience. So. Uh, the election then for the vice chair um, will begin. Um, I guess we first want to do nominations. So if anyone wants to provide a nomination, please do so. Mandy? I'm going to nominate Matt Holloway. Uh, 
Am I, um, Athena, am I able to do that? That's a very good question. Um, I don't, unless someone can come up with something in the rules that says vice chairs have to be um, members of the council, I don't know of anything that prevents it. No, there's no prohibition. Matt, if you want to accept, you can accept. Matt, do you accept? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, um, Councillor Haneke. I'm going to struggle with who is Councillor and whose first name, by the way, just so bear, please bear with me. Okay. Are there any other nominations for vice chair? Of yes, I'd like to oh, I'm sorry, you. Bob, you're doing that. Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm going to uh, enter the name of Kathy Shane in as nomination. Uh, Kathy, uh, do you accept? I do, except <laughs> we're not getting married. <laughs> um, is there any? Are there any other nominations? Okay, uh, then uh, again, only the five councillors can vote, um, and the two non-voting members. I will poll you to point of order, uh, Bob. You can allow the candidates, the two candidates to make statements and then committee members can make statements if they wish. I'm sorry, you're right. Uh, so uh, why don't we go just in, in the order that of nomination, Matt, if you wanna make a statement. Sure, well, I just, um, I'm grateful for the nomination. I, I didn't expect it. So I, I really appreciate the recognition and I would, um, I would just say that vice chair is a workhorse position and so, you know, although uh, Kathy comes in with a wealth of experience and may wind up getting my support, I have to think about it for a minute, or for as long as I have to think about it, um, you know, I I know for myself that I've served with with you for three uh, three plus years, Bob, and and I think we could work pretty well together. And you know, um, vitally, I have really close relationships with both Kathy and Andy, so. Um, I think, you know, I would be one more person leaning on the two of them for advice and how to do it. Should I, should I so attain the position? Okay, thanks. Um, Kathy, do you want to say anything? Uh, yeah, I'll just say a few words. Um, I would like to do this for one more year. I have been vice chair and, um, you know, in part because I have a range of things I think we really need to get done and, with Bob as chair, I'd hope to be able to work with him. And now, uh, now that Sandy Pooler is on our screen, um, we we have a tough year ahead of us. And I think we need to be um, more uh, in a, in advance in terms of not just waiting for things to come to our agenda, but pushing the agenda a bit more. And I'd like to help do that and take on some of the workload. As people know, I. I seem to have an endless capacity to work. So uh, thank you for the nomination. Does uh, do, does anyone else want to make a statement? Mandy Joe or Councillor Haneke? <laughs> thank you. Um, my statement's going to be a neutral one. I, I nominated Matt, but I also support Kathy. I think either candidate could do an excellent job as vice chair. Um, and so I, I just wanted to, to recognize that I think we have many capable people able and willing to do vice chair, um, no matter which way this goes. Um, and I thought nominating more than one person was a way to make that recognition that, that our finance committee is well served with people who can serve in leadership roles. Andy? I would like to hear from Matt if uh, he's willing to make a statement. Sure. Um, let me see. So I think the what I've observed is that the vice chair role um, plays a really integral process role between meetings. And, you know, in terms of helping to get sort of promises met, um, things that were made 
you know, during meetings, you know, we'll, we'll get the, we'll get the minutes, you know, cleaned up. We'll get um, the carryover memo um, distributed, things like, things like that, I think is, is are sort of essential to this um, vice chair role. And, you, you know, I mean, I, I think that's sort of my, my background is in um, keeping administrative wheels turning, you know, whether it's professionally or in a volunteer capacity, we just, uh, we just cranked out, you know, another 62 <laughs> medium to small grants for the cultural council. So, I mean, I think, I think I, I, I work pretty well with town staff and with other, um, you know, folks who are in service roles to, uh, as I said, keep the wheels turning, keep the lights on. Um, so I'd be happy to do that work. And then of course, most of you here are aware I, I ran for a council or counselor this past year. And, um, you know, I think that finance has been a key part of a learning uh, experience for me in terms of understanding how Amherst sort of, you know, runs its government and, and supporting the town manager and his staff in doing that. So I think this would be, you know, a really nice um, compliment to the learning that I've done. Uh, and I have, I think, hopefully a reputation for being, you know, very inclusive in terms of reaching out to, you know, all the various groups and, and sort of interested parties across town. So, uh, you know, if I was elected for the role, I'd be, you know, um, happy to fulfill it. And I think I could do it well. And I would continue to lean on my friend, Kathy, um, for, for advice. Should I be so lucky or unlucky as to get the role? <laughs> Anyone else want to make a statement? Okay, then uh, we'll go forward with the vote. I think we started with uh, Councillor Haneke last time. So we'll start with myself. Um, I vote for Kathy Shane. Next would be Kathy. A vote for Kathy. Andy. A vote for Matt. Alicia. I'm still sorry. I am having a hard time with this one as well. Um, I think, you know, Kathy has done a great job and I think that she would continue to do a great mm -hmm. job. And I also, you know, always advocate for, for new voices. And I think it would be really interesting to have a community member serve in a position of leadership. I'm so sorry. My voice is really not there. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to abstain again, but I just want to, you know, put my support out there for both of the uh, people who have been nominated. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Haneke? I want to echo everything that Alicia just said. Um, with that said, I'm going to vote for Kathy. Okay. And uh, Bernie, uh, who would you support? Well, you know, it's, it's, I think at this point, uh, Kathy is the nominee. I'm happy about that. I would have, I would have, will ha ha happily support that. Um, you know, I think we're going to make some changes. We need to make some changes. And, um, you know, I, I, there's a lot of capabilities on the committee. So I'm comfortable with, uh, with, with uh, most of the members taking the leadership role. So, but, you know, I, I will uh, I'll lean towards Matt. Okay. And Matt? I'll support Matt. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, so we have of the voting members, there are three for Kathy Shane, uh, one for Matt, and one abstention. And from the two non-voting members, we have support for both have supported Matt. So uh, Kathy is the uh, new vice chair. Congratulations, Kathy. Anyone else have any comments before we move forward? Um, uh, thank you, Bob. I actually, uh, Thena, would you put me in the audience, please? Thank you. Okay, so the, the next item on our agenda is the 2024 meeting schedule. Um, Right now, uh, let me see if I can. Can I uh, can I pull that up, Athena? You should be able to share your screen. Um, I can also pull it up if that's easier. That would be easier for me. Thank you. Okay. 
So the, the meeting uh, that we have, the meeting schedule is basically um, every other week from now until uh, a year from now um, or close to a year from now. I do think that we will need to put supplemental meetings in the June time frame because that's when we'll be reviewing the town budget. And we typically have done two meetings a week at that time. And we may have to extend our hours uh, if that works for people. Um, <clears throat> so as we get closer to the, that period of time, I will poll people to see what makes sense in terms of additional uh, days to meet. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, typically in August and September, we've had a lighter schedule um, because in July, uh, because uh, of the annual budget cycle. But again, we'll have to wait and see what happens in terms of um, any changes that are made in the in the financial uh, in the financial schedule and um, other things that may come up. So, does anyone have any comments on this schedule as we as we have it laid out, Councillor Haneke? Yeah, um, my comments are similar to yours. Um, the June 18th empty date struck me as very strange. I don't know whether it was just an accident. Um, that's complete middle of budget season and budget might not even be passed yet. Um, so it seems odd that we would be skipping a meeting in June um, beyond all the ones that we normally have in May for budget purposes. Um, the the other one is July 2nd. The budget would be passed by then. I I always, though, it's not an ideal time no matter what because of the holiday on the 4th. I always like to err on the cautious side of putting a meeting on an agenda so that everyone's got it in their calendar and then canceling it if it's not necessary. Um, and so... I would probably advocate putting a July 2nd meeting on um, or whatever's the third Tuesday after July 18th, maybe um, uh, June 18th, if people didn't want the second. But um, and with the potential of recognizing that if the budget is passed in late June on the 24th or whatever, we probably don't need a meeting July 2nd. Um, but I always like to be cautious. Um, I, I have finance committee on June 18 on my, on my calendar with all the committees. I think it was just an error that I left it off, um, but I didn't have a meeting scheduled July 2. I think I was thinking that the 4th of July holiday would be that week. And so that's why I left that date off. Yeah, we can, we can, we can adjust this, this schedule as we go. Uh, Kathy, did you want to make a comment? Yeah, um, I don't have a comment on any more adjustments than Mandy just did, but with with Sandy Pooler joining the town in the capacity does it, I know he knows the big capital projects. I would want to make sure as we get into this calendar year that we can really focus on uh, DPW fire station, the big capital projects and talk about the money. So it may be by adding one or two of those states if we have a breather where where other things aren't crowding them so i think it's a good idea to have them on our calendars and then to think through when that makes the most sense i'm not saying either july 2nd which was is an interesting time to think of large capital projects but in in any case um we got this past year the fall got incredibly busy and squeezed out time so trying to think of you know the first half of the year. So I think this is a good schedule is the long-winded way, but but saying at least one of the agenda setting, trying to leave the agendas open for a longer discussion. Thank you. Andy? I guess that I am uh, urging that we give thought immediately to the additional meetings that we know we're going to need between May 1st and the middle of June, uh, because we know that the charter provides that 
the town manager will give provide the budget on May 1st, and we have 30 days to review the budget and make our recommendations to the council. We know how much work that it has been in the past to do that. Um, I uh, would support having a discussion amongst the committee at the earliest possible time about whether we want to restructure how we um, are going to um, do the budget or whether we're going to adhere to the budget review as we have in the past. We began to have that discussion at uh, um, our, one of our uh, media meetings at the end of the last uh, session of the uh, town council. So, but um, I just don't think that there's enough, no matter what we do, we are gonna need more meetings. And I think that it um, is uh, not wise to wait to schedule those meetings because talk about it's something that needs to be on the schedule that heavy a period of time, we really need the schedule solidified. Okay, so um, we we certainly should be able to put additional um, Tuesdays um, at this time. I presume uh, presume that works for everyone. The question is, what other days of the week would we want to schedule? Because we typically do two two uh, meetings a week. Um, so I guess. What is May 28th? Is that a holiday weekend set after the, I don't have a calendar up in front of me. I don't believe so. Okay. Hey Bob, Bob, I have a request. It's yeah. not a, it's not specific to any particular date. I would just ask if it's possible and if it's a <clears throat> creates a burden, don't do it, um, Athena, but if it's possible to get the Google Calendar events created, doesn't need the Zoom links or anything, but just placeholders for the for this whole schedule, that's incredibly helpful to me just because my my calendar is like a shifting thing constantly. Um on your Outlook calendar? Whatever um, software device you're using to to create calendar events, um, I can work with you offline to figure that out. Okay. So we're um, so typically we've tried to for Thursday or Friday uh, to be the second meeting of a week. It would does that work? Does that work? Is there anyone who can't? Uh, do a th Thursday afternoon or a Friday afternoon? Uh, Councilor Haneke? Um, I'll try to answer that question and then also a suggestion. Um, Thursday afternoons might be problematic depending on when they're scheduled to end. Um, but if I have enough notice, I might be able to work around some carpool schedules. Um, for me, but Friday afternoons are are generally fine for me. Um, but I guess one of my comments was, I like that we're putting in all the Tuesdays in May because the budget report for finance has to be back 30 days. So basically by the end of May, it needs to be back at the council. So May's the, the tough month, although because of... Um, the capital plan and stuff, we might need a couple more in June. But um, if we have the conversation that Andy suggests, which I wholeheartedly support about how we review the budget um, and whether there's a more efficient or different way of doing it that doesn't require it all to be done in May for whatever reason, um, maybe we don't have to put so many meetings in yet um, if we have that conversation in the next month or so where we can talk about how we want to review sort of a budget and a schedule for department review and stuff like that. 
Okay, Alicia. Um, I could make either a Thursday or Friday work, but it just depends on the timing. So I'm just wondering when you say afternoon, what time exactly do you mean? Well, um, I I don't I can I can meet anytime. So I'm I'm retired. So <laughs> um, it's really up to people um, on the committee um, in terms of. I mean, what time would work? I mean, we can we can try to start earlier. Does that work for people? Well, uh, I mean, I'm I'm retired too, but that doesn't mean I'm on I'm always on schedule. Um, Tuesday, if we're going to meet Tuesday afternoons, if we could end prior to five o'clock, that would be preferable. It's not a man mandatory, but it would be preferable. If we're going to meet Thursdays, then again, let's wrap it up by five. Uh, if we can't, that's okay. But Thursday happens to be a day when a number of the activities that I've participated in have landed on for some strange reason. So ending at five o'clock is a favor to me. Fridays um, tend to be unscheduled. I would prefer mornings, but afternoons do work. Um, and again, let's wrap it up. Uh, Early enough in the in the uh, in the evening, or to uh, uh, to allow for some downtime and other other things as the days get longer. Okay, thanks, Andy. Yeah, I just want to uh, point out that uh, the other committee that I'm on, which is TSO, is meeting on Thursdays at ten in the morning, and so if we're meeting. At two, it's certainly not a problem. If it's earlier than two, there could be an overage in one meeting or no time in between meetings, which is always difficult. So that's the only thought that I have about that. It really will involve a very small number of days where there's that possible overlap if because we're really talking about one month out of a year, but I thought I'd point it out. Okay. Alicia, do you would would uh, would an earlier start like on a Thursday at one work for you? Um, yes, I could do Thursday. I'd be finishing up around one, so like one thirty would be better. Okay. Uh, but I could also make a Friday morning work as long as it's not conflicting with the elementary school building committee meeting. Um, so that's also an option. Okay. So the, we got a lot of dates floating around here. <laughs> um, what about Friday mornings? Would that work better for people? Anyone not able to make Friday mornings? Uh, is, is Paul here, Paul, for the staff? Would Friday mornings work? Typically, staff prefer morning uh, Friday mornings and Friday afternoons. Friday afternoons can be difficult for staff, um, and you know I think if you did it later in the morning, like i.e. like at ten o'clock, I often have you know we have events that begin at eight or eight thirty in the morning, most likely. Um, but I think I mean Holly and Jen can weigh in as well. Do you have a preference, Holly or Jen? My schedules for Fridays are okay in the mornings. That's Holly. The only thing I have is school building committee for that monthly meeting they, on they Friday morning. End, they usually end by 10. Yep. Yep, great. That's our input. Thank you for asking, Bob. Okay, sure. So why don't we tentatively schedule um, Friday mornings in May? Uh, from well, let's let's uh, let's say ten to one, and that'll give us a little bit more time. Although it's gets into lunchtime, but um, again, we can we can go back uh, and and take a look at these uh, as we get closer. But uh, if people want to get it in their calendars. Uh, Bob, all four, let's see, one, two, there's five Fridays in May. Would you like me to put in all five Fridays? 
Yeah, we may need because the last one is going to be the thirty first, right? Or so someone should someone should ask Athena about her. Uh, since she's she's been known to send out uh, notices on the weekend and stuff like that, so uh, I'm going to make it work for you, Bernie. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Uh, and the other, just uh, being selfish uh, uh, for me, doing uh, after photography, April and May are like prime times. So if we're going to have these meetings, um, you know, if we're going to schedule these up. Let's make sure that they're they're fairly firm and that everyone shows up for them. Otherwise, I'm going to be grumpy. <laughs> Well, if there's anybody who can't make the additional meetings, uh, let me know, and uh, we'll uh, we'll come back and and take a look at this. But um, yeah, I do think we need to we we'll need the last day every day in May we can get uh, because we may have to finish up a report. Um, I'm going to clean this up for you. Okay. Um, but if you want to, Kathy has a hand up, but if you want to vote on it as it is, and then I'll clean it up before I post it. Okay, Kathy? Um, I'm fine with what we just did, but as Alicia mentioned, we have elementary school building committee and Paul said, you know, we'll be done by 10 in the morning, but it's a, a big day and that's only May 17th. That's the only day. So Right now, I think leaving it just as you've done, but I think if uh, if it's possible not to do May 17th or when we get to the end of April, if we say May 17th could start at 11 sure. because we're only meeting once, we're only meeting once a month. So I don't wanna, and I chair that, so I can't actually leave early. Um, no, that's fine. <laughs> Yeah. So that was just that's that that is the one I just was checking. We were only meeting once a month. So that, that just yellow shade that or whatever for the time. Do you want me and, to take and, it out? Do you want me to remove this, Kathy? No, I think it's okay. I'm just saying, you know, if it's that would start, you know, I, I hate to uh, micromanage right now if that started more like 11 to, to make sure if we go till 1030, we're not overlapping. But when we really take a look at this, um, it, maybe we want to bunch up some of the department meetings and have a longer meeting some mornings. So Bob has said 10 to 1. So we get more done on one of the Fridays. So we can schedule, we can manage this schedule more in April is what I'm thinking, you know, yeah. as we think about how we're going to do it. Yeah. Yeah, we can't. I mean, I can't think that far ahead anyway. So yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just flagging for everyone that's the one what alicia mentioned that's the one the that's the only school committee meeting building committee meeting that month okay so i'm hearing this is okay yep okay any other comments on this schedule okay so i guess we have a we'll need a motion to oh. Athena will probably see it, but the May 10th time. Thank you. <laughs> <Thanks. At> 1 a.m. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, I guess we need a motion to uh, adopt. Ad adopt this schedule. So moved, Kathy. Second, okay. Panicky. Okay. Um, so let's go through, um, so we'll start with, uh, Matt. Is Matt still there? Uh, maybe you can come back to Matt. Yeah. Uh, Bernie? Yep, it's fine. Uh, Kathy? Yes. Uh, Andy? Yes. Alicia? Yes. Uh, Councilor Haneke? Aye. Works for me. Uh, I'm a yes. Uh, Matt? Support. 
Okay, you support that. So we have five, everyone, it's unanimous, five counselors voting yes and two resident uh, members uh, supporting. So we'll, as I say, we'll come back and we'll take a look at the calendar as we move forward. Um, the next item on the agenda is review of carryover items. Um, Andy, do you want to kind of set the stage for this? Because I'm not quite sure what we can review. Um, there only looks like one that we can actually get started on. Uh, the rest are kind of, we're kind of waiting for others. But um, did you have some thoughts about what we want to do or how we should take these on? You might have a copy of the carryover memo available to put on the screen, but uh, the issue that comes up to me that we could work on without relying on any other committee is the uh, surplus property, uh, which was a policy that we really did not get an opportunity to spend much time on in <laughs> early in the year. Uh, would make sense. Um, the question of the uh, rental registration, I would uh, defer to Mandy as to what she thinks about the timing of discussion of the uh, financial uh, piece that we're talking about in this committee, which is really the fee structure and whether the fee structure is generating sufficient funds. Um, so I hope that Mandy has some um, feeling yeah. on that. As far as the questions of some of the policies like waste hauler and um, the uh, financial implications of the lighting policy, uh, those are things that uh, are really working with staff making recommendations to TSO. And then when we get a little bit of a better sense of how they're going, this committee will be in a better position to take up with the financial implications of what is recommended on those two policies. I think those were the major things that were in there. Did I miss anything, Athena? There's the waste hauler too, Andy. That's right. I mentioned waste hauler along with Did that. when I said that uh, both were relying on staff making recommendations to yep. TSO and TSO yeah. making a, uh, then formulating something that we'll have to look at the financial aspects of. Uh, the 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 other one that's on the list and it's it's waiting also for a charge is uh, reparations reparations the the, right. the cash flow so but but I think what you said at the offset Andy was you know the one we could if we want to put it on agenda for the next meeting is surplus properties um it's uh, I've been you know if we particularly if we get our heads around what has already the draft, the draft revised draft, but I had a series of comments I wanted to make on that, and then maybe we could put it on the next agenda for the next meeting. Kathy, if you send me your comments, I have some other comments from a previous meeting when it was discussed, and I can incorporate all of those into a new draft for the next meeting. Okay, and and some of mine are more um, larger conceptual. Uh, Athena, so rather than a, an edit of the edits, um, I'll do it as a memo um, and, you know, sort of, uh, but, but yes, I'll do, I'll do both. We'll do. Okay, great. Thank you. And, I th and as far as the reparations is concerned, uh, Paul might give guidance to us on uh, when we might hear back from AP Law. There was a series of questions that we we're presenting that were um, coupled with uh, suggest, uh, questions that were posed by uh, GOL in its review of other aspects of the proposal. So uh, 
think we were looking on that because we need to then come back to the financial structure, the options that they recommended and how we're gonna comment on those. Yes, Mandy, uh, Council Haneke. Yeah, um, to update on rental registration, um, the earliest would be February 6th. Um, I'm, DRC meets on Tuesdays, right now alternating with finance um, in terms of which weeks. So uh, we're waiting for the agenda to be posted for the 30th. Um, so I can't tell you, I know rental registration is on there. I do not know whether debate on it is so that it might get to a vote. Um, so I would say more likely the 20th if there are potential recommended changes. It is unclear at this point whether CRC will recommend any changes to the fee schedule. Um, it has not discussed the fee schedule requests that have been made by counselors yet. So I, I do not know the referral was just to CRC. It was not to refer back to finance. So it will be up to the chair to truly decide how that returns to the council or not. So we may we may be able to talk about that on the sixth or maybe the twentieth. Then, um, okay. I think yeah. I think I agree that we should try to talk about the surplus property um, at our next meeting. Um, it is is do we have an inventory of the surplus property, um, Paul? Do we or Paul, do we have an inventory at this point? Yeah, we have an inventory. We have a draft surplus property policy. Dave Zomack was the uh, staff person leading that, so I can talk with him about um, seeing if he's prepared to attend your next meeting. Yeah, it would be good. It'd be good to to have a sense of what the. I know that some things are like Wildwood is going to be surplus, not now, but at some point in the future. Um, and so it would be helpful to have both kind of the current inventory and then the expected uh, in the next five five years or so. Yeah, so I think what he would probably update you on is, you know, where we are with Hickory Ridge, um, with, you know, we know we have identi you've identified Wildwood, but also the, the South Amherst School. Right, right. Okay, thank you. Bob, I just wanted to note at this point, the, the policy was a recommendation for a finance committee to be updated. There is not a an impending property that we're asking the council to surplus at this point. Right, right. No, no, no. I, under, okay. I understood that. I just, it's always helpful to, for me at least to see, you know, what are we talking about? What, pro, you know, how many properties are we talking about right now? And, uh, you know, what, what, are, what, what do they involve? You know, so... And, and I would just like to know the Wildwood is still owned and controlled by the school committee until they access access it, then right. it's really not our property. If they can continue to use it as a school function, that's up to them. That's right. That's correct. Okay. Does anyone else have any other comments on this? Okay. The next item on the agenda is an update of the FY25 projections. Uh, Paul, were you going to uh, speak about that? Yes, I am. Uh, so we don't have that updated. <clears throat> we got information, you know, we have the governor's budget that should come out tomorrow, I believe. And we also have not, re we've see seen the range that Maya has given for health insurance increases. We have not seen our particular increases. We expect to see that in the first week of February, I'm hoping. Um, so after we get those two major numbers, then that's one of the projects that Sandy will help us with as well, looking at those projections. Okay. And uh, that moving on, then we'll go to the first. Um, if I may, related to that, uh, Paul, do we have any firm information on how we're going to be impacted by the governor's uh, 21C cuts? We have not seen any impact on the town at this point in time. It's mostly hitting... Um, statewide budget, statewide accounts, and also uh, earmarks, but I haven't heard anything from our state legislators about what earmarks they, if any of our earmarks are affected. Thank you. Okay, any other, uh, Councilor Haneke? Yeah, thank you. Um, 
the the Maya range was up to approximately, I think, ten percent on in, insurance, health insurance, and mm -hmm. our budget has twelve percent. Is mm -hmm. is is that correct? So we're going to be looking to potentially with some additional revenue. Well, it's not really revenue, but <laughs> lower no, expenses, lower expenses, expenses, I guess. Um, yeah. So so with that, I I know you don't have any updated projections now. Do you think between what the governor announced for UGA and the additional, you know, funding with that and their projections, do you think any of the the three percent recommendation will change at all? Um, I know your financial indicators presentation had a deficit, but are we looking right. at, an, you know, where are you thinking right now? I guess with well, these vague numbers <laughs> so we're I'm, I'm not we don't want to speculate on that mandy i know you, you're interested in it but you're right that we had put projected 12 percent for health insurance they say the maximum is going to be 9.95 percent um we also have to look in the number of people who are being covered we have to do all the payroll all the payroll projections on that so it's not a flat percentage increase it's also how many family plans how many individual plans so we have to project that all out so that takes a bit of time Any other comments? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, the next item is the first quarter report, um, which we have received. Um, and um, I don't know, is, is Holly, are you going to, Paul, is Holly going to? Yep. Yeah, Holly put it together. So thank you, Holly, for pulling it together. It comes at a really busy time of year for accounting, so. Well, I'm going to say that Sonia Aldrich helped a lot with pulling this one together <laughs> because I'm in, in the midst of multiple, multiple, multiple um, projects going on, including budget being the most important one. Um, so I, I I understand from Sonia that in the past, the first quarter report has, has mostly just sort of been given and not a lot of um, discussion on it because it is very preliminary. There are a lot of things. Um, that happen in the first quarter or don't happen in the first quarter. So um, in, in many departments, there will be very, very large encumbrances for the entire year that get posted right at the beginning of the year, or in some departments, most of their expenses are later on in the year. So the first quarter report is, you know, is is certainly important, but it's not as important as the others because a lot of things are are really based on timing at this point. Um, at the beginning of the year, we may do all of our transfers and put in large encumbrances encumbrances in certain departments, which will make them look like they're already um, sort of out of whack and or or overspent, which is really just a timing issue. So right now, um, I guess sort of the most important things to look at is. Um, is oh, is oh, how do I want to say it is really just that this is um a lot of the stuff is just projected at this point um you will see some large encumbrances in some places um that may not be used till later on in the year um I I guess I, I I'm really just wondering if anybody has questions on it uh, because a, a lot of this information and a lot of this um, is really just based on timing. Like motor vehicle excise tax bills won't be going out until February. So the majority of that collection won't happen until later on in the year. Um, right now, the investment income uh, looks pretty high, but that may be that you know, one CD came in with a with a with a rather large rate early in the year. That's not going to continue for the remainder of the year. Um, so the um, and you know things like um, pools in Cherry Hill they won't be really starting back up again until spring. So even though they may look a little bit high now, that's simply because they were in operation during the first quarter. Um, they're not going to have as much activity in the second and third quarter, and then that activity will pick up again in the fourth quarter. Um, so uh, I guess, does anybody have any questions? Andy? Yeah, I guess the one um, concern that I have looking at it, unless you can give some explanation, is recreation because uh, I, we get a lot of 
our revenue comes from the summer camp programs, uh, but they go into revolving funds before they reach the budget itself. So I don't know how to take that uh, number, but I was just uh, concerned about that particular item of, as I went through the list. Um, yes, and so the um, the vast majority of Rex um, revenue is through the revolving funds. They do pay an administrative fee back to the town. Um, are, are, I'm sorry, are you looking on the revenue side or the expenditure side? I'm looking on the uh, revenue side. Revenue side, yes. Yeah. So that um, the administrative reimbursement has not been processed yet. Thank you. <clears throat> Bernie? Yeah, I, it's, uh, thank you, Holly. I think it's uh, important to remember that none of this, uh, most of the budget doesn't get um, expended at 112 increments. That's Refresh exactly. my memory on the um, on the state aid and how that schedule works again. Is it, is it, it the cherry sheets uh, revenue is, is purely quarterly? Um. Most of the state aid comes in monthly, but there are some categories of state aid that only come in quarterly. So state aid is one where it, it usually is pretty close to the one twelfth increment um, because almost all of our payments are either monthly or quarterly. Okay. None of that. That's reliable enough and, and sufficient enough that we don't have to do any borrowing, uh, anticipating revenue. Uh, no, no. So I, I had one question about parking permits. When, what's the sort of the annual pattern of what when people are getting the parking permits? Do you get a lot in like August, September? Um, and then it tails off because uh, I notice it's just in revenues we're we're already at like forty five percent forty six percent for licenses yep. and permits, and I just wondered what the the kind of pattern was. So on parking permits, the parking permit system here in Amherst runs on the school year, so it is they are renewed in September, mm -hmm. so we will get a lot more revenue. Um, at the beginning of the year, most people get their permit for the nine month period and then don't get it again for them until the next year. Right, right. That's what I figured. Any other questions? Okay. I think. Well, thank you. Absolutely. Uh, oh, Kathy uh, had her hand up. Kathy? Yeah, Bob Holly, I have one not specifically on the quarterly, but more so I understand when, because um, I saw there was a proposal at the governor's level to potentially allow towns to control more of the excise tax. How much, what part of the excise tax on cars do we keep now? Just when, when, when we residents pay, does all of that come to the town? It all comes. Okay. Thank Correct you. me if I'm wrong, Jen, but yes, we get all of the revenue on excise tax. We do. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, and there is a the, there is a, a proposal that um, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was, no, I was just, just gonna say there's a proposal uh to increase the well to allow towns to increase the meals tax um and the hotel tax by one percent, uh, one percentage point. Um, again, it's only a proposal. So, but I don't think that that's not going to really affect us our our budget that much, as I recall. We don't have a lot in there. How did you want to say something else? Uh, no, I was just going to say that I believe I just saw something on the um, motor vehicle excise where it's going to be similar to um, meals and hotel tax, where you could do a local option, I think, to get more, but the excise tax still would come to the town. Right. But, and I'm not sure that that's 
final. I do remember just seeing an email about it very recently. I it's, believe it's the, the it's, uh, oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead, Paul. It's the governor's proposal uh, under right. the municipal right. act. So, yeah, we don't have it yet. <laughs> uh, Councillor Haneke. Thank you. Um, a question about the hotel motel revenue. Um, is that revenue that comes in in fits and starts and is highly variable because the first quarter reports are showing we've received 51% of our budgeted intention? Is that something where in the second quarter we receive a lot less? You know, does does it just sort of go in waves, or is it more equal throughout the year that we may be under budgeted? Um, so I believe the hotel motel tax is one that is um, off a month. So when we receive it in September, we're receiving June, July, and August which are the summer months and the most popular vacation months. So hotel motel is not, um, um, it is, it does fluctuate. Those would be the summer months that we received. And we do uh, estimate that fairly conservatively. We, we do typically come in over, but um, it is, it, it, there's also, you know, still recovering from COVID where nobody was going on vacations and hotel motels stuff. So that is um, that is for the months of June, July, and August, which is the heaviest, the biggest payment typically. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Bernie? Yeah, uh, the governor's been reminded that she promised no new taxes, um, although she didn't promise that somebody else could raise taxes. <laughs> uh, one of the things I'd look for is a change in the amortization schedule for the vehicle excise, because uh, at the time that the amortization schedule was done, cars tended to die after three or four years. And now the typical car is on the road for nine. So if there's any opportunity to make changes to gather some additional revenue, then we should take a look at that amortization schedule. Um, I, I'm not sure that they'll let us do that, but who knows? Um, also, the, the, just my editorializing about hotel, motel, meals, um, cannabis, all that is what I consider to be soft money. And I think it's wise that uh, we, we use low estimates in uh, uh, in, in preparing and in, in, uh, projecting those because we don't want a black swan event and it's much nicer to be surprised when you gather in more money than you project it. Thanks. Kathy? Um, this is a question more for the poll and policy end, but to the extent UMass is starting to offer catering services off campus. Um, I know we've got a agreement of sorts with them that we get hotel motel for the campus hotel um, or the part that's not UMass faculty putting somebody up, however we compute that. But to the extent they are going into off-campus competition with uh, others that cater, who and how would we know that's happening and when would we ever go after it if it's starting to be a fairly big revenue stream? For example, they were catering Thanksgiving meals. Um, mm -hmm. And it's for some of our local folks, the May revenue from catering was most of their business for the year for some of the delis to the extent UMass goes into competition with them. So it's a, it's a question of if it's happening, how do we go and capture it in a um, friendly way? So that's not new. They've been doing it for before I got here. They've been catering, yeah. providing catering services. Um, they've been expanding that though, and under the new leadership or relatively new leadership in their dining services, um, it is impactful on our local establishments and also the rulemaking that they put at the university's campus about who they can use as a caterer has impacts our our uh, local establishments. Um, 
you know, I think you know, we want to make sure that they collect meals tax on meals. Like if, if you go to dine at the university, they should be collecting meals tax. We want to make sure they're doing that a lot. And so um, there's, some, and I think they're doing that as far as I can tell they're doing it, but I'm not sure how many people slip through on terms of when they're collecting meals tax or not. Um, you know, they, we've had that conversations for years about the, their impact on the local economy uh, by them establishing, you know, expanding their services. So that's a constant battle for us, quite honestly. Yeah, I, I realize that. And for those of us who have been around for a long time, books used to be sold downtown and most textbooks and most of them got moved on to the on campus. So, I mean, there are a variety of ways where you, UMass has become its own uh, commercial enterprise. As So... Thanks. You know, it's just an observation. You know, I got, I, I did call our assessor because I even got, they may have closed it down, but out of the School of Public Health, they were operating hearing aids and come and get your hearing tested here. So I thought, mm, you're kidding me, but I'm not sure that is still going on, but I got a mailer um, to, and I, uh, so I know captioning, it's not easy, but it's, it's revenue lost. So for not just us, for our businesses. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone else have any other comments on the first quarter report? Okay, we'll move then to the next item, which is public comment. Um, and I'm opening it up. Uh, I think Lynn is the only participant in the only in the audience. Um, so it uh, doesn't look like we have any public comments. I think that's it. Does anyone want to bring up a, a topic, another topic that not reasonably anticipated by the chair? Yeah, um, I want to express my joy at seeing Sandy smiling face on the screen here. Uh, I knew he'd be back. I knew he'd come back. Um, can, I'm not clear on the extent of Sandy's role. Um, uh, it's welcome, whatever it is. But if we could get a few, uh, uh, a few words about that, um, for those of us who are out of the loop. Bob, it was okay if I respond to that? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, we did want to, I was, I was, I want to introduce Sandy Pooler. For those of you don't, who don't know him, Sandy was the finance director for the town of Amherst from 2011 to 2016, I believe. Before that, he was the chief financial officer um, for the city of Newton. After when he left uh, Amherst, he became the uh, deputy town manager for the town of Arlington, and then the town manager for the town of Arlington. And when he retired at his retirement party, we started. I started. We had the conversation about, hey, what about Amherst? And so, um, with the new year, uh, seeing the status of our search for a new finance director and recognizing the incredible. Um, um, burden that our co-interim finance directors, Jen and Holly, are under, um, we, Sandy was gracious enough to, after taking a bit of break, come back and sort of provide us some services. Um, we're talking a uh, limited amount. You know, I, I think if he doesn't need to be in a meeting, it's it's probably best, but he'll come to finance committees meetings as, as needed if there's something on the agenda for him. Um, we're looking at about 10 to 15 hours a week, and it, we're going to play this out by ear a little bit. The types of things that we want him to look at are financial projections, which is what we talked about a little bit here is to update our financial projections, working with um, Jen and Holly on that, uh, looking at our uh, debt schedules, things like that, looking at the four capital projects and how we're financing those projects with the newest reality and the new um, options that are available to us. Um, looking, you know, working with running our capital improvement program and um, of course, working with taking on significant role with the budget. So Sandy's taken on a lot. I'm not sure how much he'll be able to pull in, but he's very efficient in his work and, uh, and knows the town, has great affection for the town. 
Um, and so I said, if you, you, you want to introduce yourself yourself, you have to put your microphone thing down though, if you're gonna talk. Hello, everybody. Hi. Uh, yeah, so I'm back in Amherst. Um, had my first lunch at Black Sheep, so that was a nice familiar experience. <laughs> uh Paul I think went through all of the the major tasks uh today is my first day of doing this work so I'm just getting up to speed on some of the numbers uh figuring out where the files are and all those things uh much of it will be familiar from when I was here before but there have been various changes to the budget structure so also getting up to speed on that uh, I look forward to working with the committee. Um, I uh, would intend to attend at least some of your meetings, to, uh, although uh, I think I'll work with the chair about what's gonna be on your agendas as to what will uh, be appropriate, since uh, I am only doing uh, a certain number of hours per week. So try to spread my time out for what are the priorities and what's most useful to you. Uh, other than that, um, I like spreadsheets, <laughs> and uh, so uh, it'll be fun getting back into that. Uh, I now have a town email, uh, which is um, poolers at amherstma.gov. Uh, Amherst um, I'll also give you my phone number, um, which is let's, my let's, cell. Let's let's share that out over email, Sandy. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Versus yeah, a public meeting. This is a public <laughs> well, meeting. <laughs> I guess anybody will eventually will hear it, but it was it was public before, so I will share that with you on via email. Um, so uh, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. Otherwise, I look forward to working with all of you. Well, on behalf of the committee, Sandy, we're very happy that you're here to help us. Um, we could certainly use your help. <laughs> um, we have a big, uh, a big issue with our town finances over the next couple of years. So, I think uh, your experience and your 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 um, willingness to dive into the details, I think, will be very very helpful to us. Um, and I also enjoy working with spreadsheets. So <laughs> uh, I, I'd like to see numbers uh, as do I think a lot of the people on this on this committee. So, okay, uh, anyone Holly, else? Ha Holly, Holly has her hand up. Oh, sorry, I see it. I would just like to welcome Sandy and thank him from the bottom <laughs> of my heart because I am overwhelmed and to see his face today allowed me to breathe a little bit. So thank you, Sandy. And thank you, Paul, for bringing him back. Keep breathing, Holly. Keep breathing. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> OK. Um, any other comments? OK, I think uh, we've gone through our uh, agenda. So the meeting is now adjourned at 3.13 uh, PM. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.